Hello Knockouts, Tanya TKO here and I woke up with a message on my spirit that I wanted to speak out this morning. So when you come on in, say a quick hello because this video is live and if you're catching it after it's live then I'd love for you to just drop a comment below. Alright, so as you all know, I'm Tanya TKO and I'm a self-love specialist from TanyaTKO.com. I hope you learn how to love yourselves and each other. And on this channel, we use viral video topics as teachable moments in our own lives. However, this morning, I just want to follow up on a theme that I've been hearing that has been going on for some time. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Come on in. Come on in. This morning I woke up and there was, um, so as you know, we did all of these interviews yesterday and we've been talking about um, working while you're pregnant and all of the tremendous amount of feats that we as black women have to go through. And something stuck with me yesterday from, from the broadcast. And one of the things that stuck with me, you know what, let me go into the light so that, cause as you see, this is my, this is the view that I wake up to in the morning. The sun is just coming up. It will be a hot day out here in California. Good morning, Abdel. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So, this morning I woke up to a word, and that word is that black men are not going to get better if we coddle them. During last night's, during last night's broadcast, we were talking about, um, we were talking about whether or not black women can afford to be able to not work while she's pregnant, can be able to rest and be able to, to take care of incubating the baby, right? And the message that I'm receiving is that for the most part, we can't. We can't. And then this morning, I woke up to a message where I was reading some of the messages that were posted yesterday. And one of the messages was, um, oh, you hate black men. And then they started talking about that video that I did with the, um, with the, the black fathers who were dancing with their daughters on the stage. And the black men, literally, this is what they did. They picked up the daughters, turned them around, put the daughters back, and put up one hand. And everyone in the crowd was going wild. And I commented back to this person about, because I get a lot of flack for that video, and I realized that part of the reason that I, that I get a lot of flack, and one of the comments that I sent to this person was, you know, We've become accustomed to really just accepting anything from black men. Mediocre, subpar, and below average effort. And that has become the norm. So much so that if you request or require more than that, you get accused of all types of hatred. I love black men. I love black men. And you all will not see one video on my page where I talk about swirling or any of this stuff. I do talk about, you know, finding the, the right man for you. And whatever that is in your opinion, interpretation, you go out there and you do that. I love black men. And if we as black women, if we want to be able to rest when we're pregnant, if we want to be able to live comfortably, then we have to task black men with rising to the occasion of doing that. We must. And it's like, they are not going to get, oh God, how do I put this? They're not going to get better, black women, if, if we just accept anything. If we don't, if we don't sit back in our femininity and say, you know what, baby, this is what I need. This is what I need. If you accept anything, you will receive anything. And the thing about it is that we as black people, we are an amazing, innovative people. We are an amazing, powerful, creative people. And if you need your man to own a business, it's like we're just as citizens, we're just sitting by 
while most of the money is trickling upward while we're working for pennies. We used to be entrepreneurs before. We used to have businesses so much so, so much so that we are having issues, problems, even thinking out of the box. Like I did a video. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I did a, when I was doing the video yesterday, people were laughing about the fact that I live in an RV. And I'm like, think outside the box, hun. Question your reality. What is it that you're doing? And does that make sense? Does it make sense to pay thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to a landlord? Does it? Does it make sense to stay stagnant in one area? Does it? Does it make sense to sit idly by and just accept anything? And it's like, you know what? Listen, women, you have no idea your power. You have no idea the power of your femininity. You have no idea. It's like our femininity, our softness, our suppleness, our plumpness, the curvature, the, the pumped upness, the, the, the glossiness, all of this stuff really invigorates men. And, and if you look, if it wasn't for women, let me let me ask let me ask the men on the broadcast this morning. Let me ask all of the men. I want you to put up, if you're heterosexual, right, if you're heterosexual, if, if it weren't for women, would you even shower or trim your beard or do personal hygienic upkeep if it wasn't for women? Put up the number one if it's yes, if it weren't for women, so women inspire you to want to get your shape up, to want to pump up your muscles, to want to stay in shape, to want to wash your biscuits. Put up a number two if you would continue to do these things if it wasn't for women. One, if you do these things because of women. Two, if you would do those things regardless of women. So go ahead. I want to see those numbers come up. I want to see those numbers come up. So we're going to wait for the, the voting on that. But ladies... I'm telling you, and I hope you hear this message and this word that I'm saying this morning, that if we, if we want more, we have got to require more. Because if you really think about it, when a black man wants coddling, when he wants, you know, when he wants to just get by, when he wants to, when, when he's a hobosexual and all of these other things, when he wants to just coast by, right, he'll find a black woman. Right. And that black woman, like like some of these people, like on that post with the with the black men who just all they did was pick up the daughter, turn round, put her back down and did the pot of bourree hand up in the air. Minimal effort. Right. When he wants to be coddled to get the claps and the applause for doing very little. He'll come to you. But look at the statistics. Where do the black men with the money, with the resources, where do they go and who do they give those resources to? They know how to work hard and how to get what it is that they need to get when it comes to taking care of somebody else's daughter. They, they understand protection and provision when it comes to, to someone else's daughter. At least have the conversations with them. They know and they understand. They know and they understand. You know, it's like they will go out there, they will work hard, they will get that. I, I knew a guy, right? He was, um, he, he became a business owner, but be, along the route, he was married to this black woman. They had a child together and he actually, they were, they, they were married. He ended up leaving her a single mother, right? Then he went, he started this business. He started doing these international deals, etc. And then he started dating white women. And when he started dating the white women, this is what he told me. He was like, you know, these black parents, they think so lowly of black men that when I go in there dating these women, I have to literally pull out my income statement, my balance sheet, showing his net worth and his, his um, what do you call that, his liabilities and his assets. I kid you, mother effing not. And you know what? I don't know how many of you saw that. I don't, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know how many of you saw that, 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 um, it's called The Marvelous Miss Maisel or something like that. It's on Amazon video. It's about this Jewish family from the 1950s or 60s or whatever. And the girl had gotten married once. And then she decided in this day and age, in that day and age, that she was going to get divorced. And then her parents were like, you know, you already have two children. Let's look for a husband for you, blah, blah, blah. And then she met this guy who was smitten with her. When the guy came over to her house, 
he came over with his damn balance statements. He did. He came over with the books from his business, showed how he was going to be able to take care of their daughter. All of this. All of this. He came out with all of that. All of it. And you know what? And they were like, okay, well, you know what? We see. Yes, you can take care of our daughter. Yes, we see that. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, they gave the go ahead for the marriage. You know, so it's like men understand protection and provision. And they come correct when they need to. They come correct when they need to. However, with you, if you're accepting the bare minimum, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get the bare minimum person. And the fact that we don't have as many entrepreneurial businesses as we used to have, et cetera, et cetera, is a crying shame. It's a crying shame. And we need to, we need to do better. Ladies, we need to start requiring more. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So let me see what that voting, what the voting was. Let me see what the voting was. Nicole is saying, in truth, she's saying the things that I've heard many of my peers say over the years. Why are you guys mad that she's saying it? People are mad this morning? Mm -mm -mm. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. So we have Alan who voted two. And it looks like, let's see, Warren voted two. Timothy voted one. Abdel voted one. Yvonne voted one. Or Ivan, maybe. Oliver voted two. George voted two. All right. Okay. Okay. So we have there about half and half. Half of the men would not do their shape ups, work out, wash their biscuits if it wasn't for women. The other half of them are saying that they would. And there, uh, there's a part of me that imagines that that even that is is speculative. You know what I mean? That even that is speculative because if there were really no women. And there was no dating. Um, ladies, women, we already know. You know, sometimes men's egos get the best of them. And they're not really able to really see the full picture. And this is why women in our wisdom, we don't need to be masculine or be like men. We need to be like women and have our men rise to where it is that we need them to be. You know, Catherine is saying it's time for me to get my hair redone. Yeah, I need to do it. I've been, I've been thinking about redoing it. Thank you for that confirmation. Thank you for that. So I'll, I'll be redoing it. I just got, I just flew back in. I've been having some jet lag. I haven't even unpacked, but yes, thank you. Thank you for that. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I just wanted to give that word this morning and you all could take from it what you choose. And Sonny is saying money cannot buy love. Is there, can you, can, can anybody point to the minute and second of this or any video where I've said that money could buy love? Is there any? And you see, and, and so this is a, this is a black man saying that, right? And they are like, listen, if you allow, and I'm so glad that you said that, Sonny, while we're out here. Listen, if you allow a man, and listen, every man is not going to be down with it, but if you allow a man to come to you with his loserificness, and you accept him in his loserificness, that's what you'll get. You will get the loserificness. That's what you will get. You know what I mean? Some men don't need to mate. They don't need to mate. If they don't understand the basic, bare principles of what providing and provision is, they don't need to be mating. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to be mating. And Wallace is saying, how about female egos? Let's talk about this too. Otherwise, it's a double standard. There are many double standards out here. And the fact that, that you're going to suddenly act ignorant of double standards is startling to me. Startling and disappointing. Startling and disappointing. And, um, and so let's see. Let's see. And Petrona is saying, and love can't pay the bills. So you know what? This is the thing. These people will come and stress out your parents' daughter. They will come and stress you out and put the burden upon your back and all of this. But when they get some money and they and 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 they really want and they want to level up, they go and they level up to a woman who has some requirements. You know what I mean? They level up to a woman who has some requirements. So if you don't have requirements, they'll they'll allow you to take them in their homosexual ways. They'll allow you to take them in their homosexual ways. And you know what the thing about it is? 
and I'm going to say this, this is going to be controversial. This is going to be controversial, and this is something that came, like I woke up and this thought came to me this morning. Because somebody, somebody said, somebody, there have been people who have been saying this. And you know how sometimes you hear something, and you're like, hmm, and you kind of let it, kind of let it sit on you, right? This is something that I've heard, right? I've heard that black American men are a conquered men, that they're a conquered male. And I wonder... I haven't been able to explore what the people who have said this have meant. I haven't been able to explore that. But I wonder, if black American men truly are a conquered male, right, what is it that we do to assist black American men to get onto the other side of that conquering? You know, because it's like if a person is conquered, they may not know that they're conquered. They may not know that they are under the rule of somebody else. They may not know that they've been broken. But how do we get on the other side of that brokenness? You know, and I'm telling you, like, this is a video that I'm making for women. And, you know, we have some men who are coming from a conquered energy who are attempting to then be like, well, what about women's? You're not talking about women's. We got mixed this fear. I'm having a conversation with ladies right now. So if you want to bring your, your penis-toting self into the conversation, at least be in the conversation and answer the questions that I'm asking to men instead of hoping to try to direct me from the conversation that I'm having with women, right? So... <sighs> so, how do we assist the men in getting on the other side of it? Do we assist them in getting on the other side of being conquered by coddling them? No, we really need, we really need to get our financial structures in place. We really need, like you, like some people were laughing about the fact that I live in an RV. I live off the grid. I live off of the grid. We really need to be promoting unplugging from society as we know it. We really need to be promoting the unplugation. We need to do that, right? And and we have to think outside of the box. We got to get our financial stuff in order. We have got to build no 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 no. I'm talking about us as a people because far too many of us will have women out there with pickaxes in the road. We have got to get men to build in this country. We have got to build. We've got to get our money together. We've got to build. We've got to create strong family units. We need protection. Like, we have got to be able to protect women and children from the forces that be out there that let me move over because there's there are people who are coming out for the morning walking their dogs so let me come let me come out right thank you thank you thank you so we have got to get men to understand that we need them to protect our children i'm surprised that there are so many black women who are willing to have children in this day and age when those children can be walking outside, get choked up, slammed down, killed with no repercussions. We have got to inspire men to, to stand up. We've got to be like, look, I am not going to do X, Y, Z if X, Y, Z is not in place first. I'm not going to do X, Y, Z. It's not in our best interest. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's no wonder that so many of us are stressed out out here. You know how many black mothers live in despair, wondering when their baby goes outside, whether or not their baby's going to come back in alive, and if that baby does not come back in alive, will there be any repercussions? You know what I mean? It's like, I sit there, I sit there and I, I was watching the riots, I was watching documentaries on Netflix about the riots in Los Angeles, etc., and that, that, that girl, the 15-year-old girl who was in that grocery store where she was shot in the head by the Chinese lady and the Chinese lady got off, or the Asian lady, I believe she was Korean, and she got off, and there were no repercussions. Imagine what things would be like if when a person slaughtered one of us unjustly, if there were repercussions. What would this, what would this world be like if people knew, listen, and you know, and, and like, 
you know what I'm not even gonna get biblical on you all and talk about eye for eye I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna do that but I'm saying what would it look like what would our communities look like how safe would black women feel if we if if worse came to worse if we knew that one we could get out of Dodge and under from under um, supremacist rule if two we controlled our own food supply if three we had our own protection if we felt protected out there what would what would what would this what would this world be like how would, how much respect would our community get and black women you know i'm not i'm not trying to put the bulk of the pressure and the burden on you it's just that you don't understand the power that you have as a woman as a womb and as a womb holder you don't understand the power that you have and how much control you have over how society is shaped because if you said listen i will not give birth to i will not give birth to more children unless xyz is in place i will not lay down with you unless xyz is in place i will not this i will not that what would what would how would our society shape it's it's like you know i've seen some very complicated dance moves from black people i've seen very complicated engineering very complicated invention as as a people we are so innovative we are so creative and we rise to i've i've seen complicated i've seen complicated moves on the basketball court i've seen a lot of complicated maneuvering out there I've seen complicated mathematics. I've seen a lot of complicated stuff, but that stuff came from rising in innovation. What would our society look like if we, so listen, we have it in us. We have it in us, black men have it in them. What would our society look like if we required that innovation? That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. And then I will see you all in the next video. The sun is starting to get hot. And I have like a bunch of errands and stuff to run. I'm actually just starting to run my errands since coming back into California today. I've just unhooked my truck from my trailer because I was connected for these past few days. I'm about to go in, clean up the trailer, like unpack and just start getting ready. I'm going to put my rug out and get ready to start doing my morning yoga, etc. Like some people were talking about how, you know, oh... Black women or women have easier births when they when they're active. Yes, nobody's saying that you should be inactive. All I'm saying is working full time, going to school full time, taking care of the house and doing all this stuff, the stressors, etc. Why can't you be active by coming out and doing your morning pregnancy yoga? Why can't you be active by going out and doing your your your, your walk? or doing some stretches and all of this other stuff. Why can't you be active from doing that stuff? Why do you have to be active from bussing your hump? Why do you have to be active from that? You know what I mean? So good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So you know what, what I'll do is I will read the comments before I jump out of here. Go ahead and like the video, thumbs up the video, share the video, and make sure that you get my book on my website, which is the Book of Affirmation Self Love. So let me see what some of these comments. Tribe, you know trolls will troll, ignore them. We got Good Afternoon from London. Wallace is saying, in the black struggle, everyone needs to take their own individual responsibilities, male or female. I've seen some things our sisters are doing on the street. See, we have another one talking about women. We're having a conversation about inspiring men. Come on. Yes, we do have the power, says Sophie Lee. Nicole Miller saying, I do think that men need to be more in touch with their emotional state. Some women take this no coddling rule to mean that their man should not be able to express their feelings in certain ways. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. I hope that I hope that people are not interpreting that I'm saying that. No. Of course, men need to be in touch with their emotions. Um, and they also need to learn how to control their emotions as well, be in touch with them, be able to release them, and also be able to control them. You know what I mean? Because for far too many men, the only emotion they feel comfortable expressing is anger. And that is no bueno. And Monique is saying when it applies, it hurts. And Umbaya is saying, yep, no protection and provision, no womb, no children. And Catherine is saying, LOL, the F. And Moose Hailey is saying RV life is good for single people. It's actually good for 
couples, people with children, there are, there are young people that I'm seeing, people who are waking up to the matrix and they're coming out on the road, young people coming out on the road, you know, with children. This is a, I've seen pregnant women, but you know, most of the young people that I see are, and not, you know what I'm trying to say there, and not. You know what I'm saying. Those, those who are in the club know, know what I'm talking about. So that's what I see. And Tracy's enjoying the California view. <clears throat> and Jennifer is saying, in of the ways to stop being in front lines, protesting when black men is killed, let black men get on the front lines. You know, you know, this is the thing. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? So, so... Jennifer is saying that black women need to get off of the front lines and allow black men to get on the front lines. What are your thoughts on that? Because, you know, women control culture. These black men are some black woman's child. So I want to hear what are your thoughts on that? Do black women need to get off the front lines and let black men get onto the front lines? You know, the thing about it is when black when listen, when men act, it becomes violent. Men act and it becomes violent. Um... When women act, it, I don't know, it, be, it becomes unifying. But men, I don't know, talk to me about that. I want to hear more about that because, um, yeah, I want, I want to hear more about that because, um, did someone ask where my eyebrows, you don't see them up there? They actually, I have a little powder on because I don't typically have eyebrows, so. So yeah, I did brush my teeth this morning. So is Catherine being a troll? Let me know. Cause I don't, we don't have, we're, we're having a serious conversation and people talking about teeth brushing. I made sure before I got on the, on the camera that I brushed my boca. And Wallace is saying, this is very condescending of black man. Your describe of the black men has nothing to do with me. The black man is a B. The black men around me are leaders. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Umbaya saying there's a whole movement of, for tiny home living. People are selling their houses. Good. People need to. People need to. Well, she's gone now. I've taken her out. And Timothy saying, Tanya, you're telling the truth. Some people just do not like being corrected. But they are, listen, you are doing a great job. Me as an entrepreneur, I make sure I'm on my game so I can take care of my three children and wife. She nor my children should have should not have to struggle. See now, now see, so there are there are people with penises who are listening. You know, not all people with penises are hard headed and can't hear. You know what I'm saying? Nicole is saying there's a correlation. All of the <clears throat> men I know that are active in their children's lives are more likely to get on those front lines and fight for it. Ah, interesting, 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 interesting. So do black women need to step off the front lines? Do black women need to step off the front lines? That's, that's the question, do they? Or do we need to stay on the front lines? Do we need to let black men come to the front lines and defend themselves? You know what I mean? So let's see. And T is saying, if women fall back, we will perish. Let's just be real. We are forced to step into the dominant energy. Will you? Will you? You think, you think, huh, you think that black men are going to allow you all of all of that 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 good juicy womb and, and fluffiness and, and feminine fatness you think that that black men are going to allow that to perish rather than step up come on come on come on talk to me about that you think they're gonna let all of that juiciness go you think they're gonna let all of that juiciness go rather than step up into their masculine and uphold the mantle of manhood and Nicole is saying, why does it have to be one or the other? We stand with them. Morning. Okay. And Warren is saying, no, stand by them. And people are saying, yes, no. <laughs> and
and Nicole is saying, y'all know she isn't talking about all black men. Yeah, you know, I just, I, I don't even, I don't, I don't qualify those statements that are talking about not all. I, I will, you won't hear me saying that in my videos because it's condescending. Because if I don't say all, then what makes you think I'm talking about all? There's like a lizard that's like, lizard just running back and forth. I don't know what it's doing. All right. So no, I'm, I'm serious. So... See, this is the thing. So there's a, there's a young woman here that feels that black women will perish if we don't have to take care of ourselves. Is that true? Is that true? Because you know, you know black men want to procreate. They want to procreate. And those who don't want to procreate, then they don't have to. But the ones who want to procreate know that they have to come through a woman to do that. So hold on, I see Nicole going off. Let me see, let me see. And Nicole is saying, no, F that she is. If you are a leading, strong, etc., black man, yet you know you don't teach your fellow man or correct them when they do wrong, you are trash. I had to stop a black man from beating a woman while a bunch of other black men watched and did nothing. Lord have mercy, are you serious? And Akira is saying, my husband is a big believer that it's his job to provide and protect our family. And while it's my choice, if I want to work, he believes that my main job is to nurture and love our boys. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, you know what? And Timothy is saying, men need to listen to what our women are telling us. They are nurturers and have wisdom. And then it, it scrolled past because the comments are coming in so quickly. And Yvette said, but they no longer have to go to black women to procreate. Okay. Well, you know what? Listen, listen. And then that's, and then that's another thing. Listen, listen. And you know what? I'm so glad, happy I read that. I'm so, I'm so glad I read that um, before I got off of this broadcast. You know, when you're dealing with a conquered man in a supremacist society and he exalts another woman above you that is your cue right there that you need to find another man you need to find men who do exalt you because listen African features are beautiful they're regal they're powerful I showed you all last night the cut of my cheekbone you can't see it too much in the morning light but it's still it's still there look look do you see that People pay good money to contour to get that chisel line right there. Listen, our African features are beautiful. And there are men who love those features and they want to have African, they want to have Negroid children. And so you need to be with men who love those features and exalt those features. In a, in a, in a supremacist society like ours, where our features, I saw, you know what, I'm going to do a reaction to this cartoon I saw where the person lost all, quote unquote, lost all their beauty and then became black. I need, and then all hair got curly and everything. So I need to do, I need to do, I need, I need to do a, a thing about that. <laughs> so yeah, so, so we'll, so, so I'm going to do that because in far too many societies, you know, black features are considered ugly or, or below other people, etc. And so we have to align ourselves with the people who know that our features are beautiful and are dominant and are not purposely trying to dilute their features to become more Europeanized. You know what I'm saying? So, and you know what? If you look, oh God, I'm, you got you. You all are really, you all are really challenging me this morning. So I really appreciate that. Cause like I like even with the title title of this video, we grow from being forced to step up. So you all are making me think about things that I have not articulated, right? So as you all know, as you all know, I'm going to to Nigeria to Lagos um, in the winter. And one of the things that I'm doing is I'm meeting with radio stations and television stations as, as well. So I'm going to be pitching my show over there. When you look on the airwaves of Nigerian TV, you see women with 
wider noses well wide noses like mine you see them with full lips you see them with brown skin and so when you're in a society like ours that exalts Europeanized features and pushes the European standard of beauty, you have, a, you, you have an uphill battle that you're climbing against, right? And so find yourself men who love your features, who love your beauty, who, who exalt you. It's, it's, as simple, it's as simple as that. You know what I mean? And if that means going to a different culture or a different place, then do that. Do that. O on the real tip. On the real tip. You know what I'm saying? On the real tip. So, so yeah, so that's my, those are my thoughts on that. I'm going to jump out of the video in just a little moment. I'm going to read a few comments and then we're going to, and then I'm out of here. And even if you see this video after I've gone live, go on ahead and drop your comments below. And Sophie Lee is saying, people in Korea are literally cutting their eyelids to have big, beautiful eyes like us. You know, I don't, I, I do not co-sign that sentence. Because people in Korea are cutting their eyelids to take away their phenotype and their gene, to, to mask their genotype. And their eyelids are beautiful the way that they are. You know what I mean? And I think that we have to... Instead of saying our F X Y Z is beautiful and they want the beautiful stuff like us, I think that we must say, you know what, we all have different types of beauty, and we have to, and we can honor each 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 group's type of beauty. It's not one or the other. You know what I mean? Like their Asiatic eyes are beautiful, big eyelids are beautiful, full lips are beautiful. I think the issue comes in when we exalt a standard of beauty. And then we task ethnicities to erase their genotype or attempt to erase their genotype. Like if you think about it, if you think about it, right? If you think about it, how many black women, how many black women do you know who have become famous in the United States who have had, let's say, three defining Negroid phenotypes with the wide nose and dark skin? with the wide nose and, 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 and crinkly hair, far too often in American media, many of the black women that we see are, have gotten nose jobs. Even Kerry Washington got a nose job. And Kerry Washington is beautiful. You know, but it's like when she wanted to make it in Hollywood, she got herself a nose job. She thinned up her nose, which is heartbreaking. So you know, so you all know that I just came back from this celebrity event. And when I was looking at all of these A-listers, right, as they're known in Hollywood, when I was looking at all of these A-listers and I was looking at their phenotype, so many of them fit into the same mold. It's like, oh, if you want to be beautiful, you've got to trim down that nose. What would it be like if we were able to shine in our greatness, in our Negroidness? I kind of feel like we're changing the topic now at this point. And Nicole is saying, if you can answer her with specific names, you've proven Tanya's point. So, or, or can't. Can or can I don't know. So listen, so I want, look, tell me. Tell me who. Because Lupita Nyong'o, as dark as she is, if you look at her features, she has a very slim nose. Very, very muted lips. You know what I mean? You don't see Nina Simone type looks. Nina Simone was, Nina Simone committed demanded her industry because she was so fierce at what it is that she did and she was unapologetic since Nina Simone when have we seen um, when have we seen when have we seen a black woman really be able to 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 brook out with Negroid features and so and so look I see some names that have come through India Irie and you know what? I'm so glad you mentioned India Irie. Because if you really think about India Irie, she really, really, really never got the recognition and the fame that she deserved. She never got it. 
like all throughout her 20s and stuff like that when she was young and her songs were hit and popping she never got the recognition that she that she that she could have gotten and then also her skin is is medium brown so we have viola davis i i venture you to look at viola's nose take a look at her nose she has a very she she does not have a definitively negroid nose you know she has dark skin go look go look so india i okay Octo octavia spencer hmm is octavia spencer the one that was that played in that film ma or is she the one who was in waiting to exhale who was switching her way away from that man she's like is he looking at me which one is octavia spencer was she the one from ma or was she the one who was like switching away with her little cute big bubbly self mm -hmm. and so and so I, I'm gonna jump out of this broadcast because we started talking about something completely different at this point however I want you all to really take a look take a look um, <clears throat> <clears throat> I want you all to name one mega R&B or rap diva who is dark skin you know if you look at who is making it out there come on tell me tell me who are they the mega divas, all of the mega divas that we have are all lighter than a brown paper bag. You know, like the ones who are really, we got Nikki, we got Cardi, we got Beyonce. They're all lighter than a brown paper bag and they all have Euro phenotypes. So it's like, we haven't had like a, a diva, like we used to have brown skin divas. We had Anita Baker and we had Stephanie Mills. But since them, who have we really had? Oh, yes, that was Loretta Devine. Whatever happened to Loretta De You know what? Loretta Devine was in um, Being Mary Jane, and she was playing like this, this lesbianic kind of part. I, th I thought she acted her butt off on that. So yes, so yes, 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 yes. Octavia Spencer. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then, how interesting. How interesting. So you mentioned Octavia Spencer, and then you said Ma and the Help where they were positioned in roles of uh, uh, just, I don't know. I, I, they, mm -mm. like Loretta Devine's role was cute in that, in that thing. She was a love interest, she was fluffy. But since the 80s and 90s, have, have, have Negroid features really been winning? Since the 90s, has Negro, have Negroid features been winning in Hollywood? And so someone is bashing me for my thoughts. Let's see, what in the world, who's bashing? Oh Lord, Wallace, see what I'm saying? And so the thing about it is, remember remember in, in The Sixth Sense, when that boy was like, he sees dead people, but they don't know that they're dead? There are so many of us who are walking around from a state of extreme brokenness and we don't realize just how broken we are. Like we have this person, Wallace, in the chat who is exuding from his toxic broken energy and he doesn't realize just how toxic, downtrodden and victim-y he is. Oh, we had Lauren Hill. Yes, but I'm saying, who have we had since the 90s? You know what I mean? In the, in the 2000s, what Negroid features have been winning? And the Negroid features that have won have darker skin with Euro phenotypes or very muted Negroid features. So anyway, listen, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Go on and thumbs up the video, share the video, leave your comments below. I have errands that I have to run today. So I'll read your comments and stuff after. And so this, the purpose of this video was to talk about not coddling men and really having men step up, you know, and you know what, actually, before I go, let me hear Wallace out. What is it that you disagree with? Let's hear, what is it that you disagree with so badly that you have to be speaking from your victim energy inside of my chat room? What is it that you disagree with? Please let us know. Because I'm just, I'm so confused. 
So we don't need to, and we don't need to have men. We need to coddle men. Is that what you're saying? We need to coddle men and not inspire them into greatness. Is that what you're saying? Is that what, come on. Just, I, I want to hear this now. <sighs> God. <clears throat> Oh, you know what? I think I did see H-E-R, the singer, her. And I think you're right. I think she, doesn't she have like big hair and, and unapologetic Negroid features? She's brown, she's lighter in skin, but, but I think she, I think, I think, I think I know who you're talking about. So, um, yeah, let me, let's take, let's take a look. Let's take a look. For some reason, the bugs out here are trying to, come for me this morning so did he did he did he say what it is that that he disagrees with so badly that he has to be here oh god we all need to get together and plan the future you're not doing it right oh god who who who's not doing it right Who's not doing it right? Women? Because last I checked, women were not supposed to be the quote unquote leaders. So if we ain't doing it right, then step the hell up. Step up. And Wallace is saying, I don't know what king of men who are around you, but I'm a great father, friend, leader, and husband. The F does that have to do with what the F we're talking about? What does it have to do with what we're talking about? Okay, so you think that you some good, everybody thinks that they, they good, this, that, and the other. But then you look how they show up, and they, they wallowing in toxic energy, being a victim, complaining, complaining, whining, whining and complaining. Everybody thinks they, they, they great, and everybody is great in their own way. Oh, these bugs, they're coming for me coming for me you know what I mean everybody thinks that they're so wonderful and so great and everybody is wonderful and great however are you high vibrational or low vibrational it's as simple as that it's as simple as that and so and, and the fact that he's taking this conversation as a personal attack can listen the very you know what and I'll say this right because I have some amazing men around me who and we talk about we talk about my background who really rise to the mantle of manhood and if i had not had those men around me i would not be able to have this conversation right now you know what i'm saying i would not be able to have this conversation right now because i would think i would think that the bumhood and the bumminess is the norm. So I wouldn't even speak up. I'd just be like, oh, this is the norm. But the fact that I can see and know that there is more and greater is the reason why I speak up. So when people are like, I don't know what type of men you have around you. I have great men around me. Obvi obviously. 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 Because if I didn't, I myself would be downtrodden. And I myself would be wallowing around in a lower vibrational energy and being like, that the best Hercule could do. Hercule, Hulk, that the best he could do. Then I would be like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know you people. And until you see, it's like, we have men out there who think that they so doggone great. But when given the opportunity, they attack women. They attempt to bash women. Some of them are cursing women out. You know what I'm saying? We have some men on this broadcast who are speaking truth, yet we still have Wallace wallowing around out here. Wallowing around. I'm a good father. But yeah, look at how your black ass is showing up on this broadcast, acting like a little B.I. I'll let you put the rest of the letters in there. I'm sorry, I just, I'm disgusted. I get, I guess disgusted by low vibrational men. I just, I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I just, I just, it doesn't resonate with me. And I just, I just want it away from me. Ugh. Anyway. My skin is looking chocolatey and caramelly, isn't it? Mm, mm, mm. Anyway. And Wallace is saying, your description of men's is a reflection of your own 
experience exclamation point exactly 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 and this is how I can differentiate bums this is how I can differentiate the bums and the toxic low vibrational males because of what it is that I know to be truth because of what it is that I know to be truth so anyway <clears throat> I will let you all go. I'm going to go. I got to go run some errands. I, gotta, I haven't been to the post office since I've been back. And I asked them to hold on my mail. So I can imagine I need to bring it all in a bucket. <laughs> so I, I'll see you all in the next video. And Wallace is saying, now your true nature is coming out. Yes. Yes. Because I am a warrior goddess. Do you not see the warrior hair? Let me pull down my warrior hair. So that... <laughs> Let me pull down my warrior hair so that you can no say that I am a warrior. Yes, look at my warrior hair. Don't you see? Yes, this is my nature. I'm a warrior. Yes, yes. And for those of you who don't know, yes, yes, yes. Go get my book on self-love. Because in one of, because my book on self-love, it's an affirmation book. And in the affirmation book, I, I have work pages in there for you to also dig down into the power of your being and pull out your own queenness or kingness. Yes, I am a warrior queen. Can you not see? Yes. Yes. I didn't come here to play. I did not come here for games. So, huh. The nerve. That's because I was raised by warriors. I was raised by warrior men and warrior women. And so I know, I know say what it is that you are capable of. And you will rise. You will rise or you will fall behind. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And you know what? I got to go get the rest of my mohawk shaved down on the sides so that when I walk down the street some more, people can know, say, I'm a warrior queen. Yes. So listen, on that note, <laughs> on that note, I will see you all in the next video. Tanya TKO, warrior queen, and I am out. Peace. Men, rise to the equa equa equation. That's right, because this is math. Rise to the equation. I'm going to leave it at that. Rise to the equation. Doggone. Peace.